Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to 6 News. So, as you're watching this video, the reverse friendly fire system on Rainbow Six Siege should be getting switched on for the very first time and hopefully it's going to go smoothly. So, this is not going to be done with a patch. It should be done server side. So, I'm hoping it's all going to go smooth. We've seen in the past they've switched on stuff like the MMR rollback and it's not quite worked out. They've also let us know that this is the first iteration of this. And the bonus is we also get the forgive system in this too. So if you team kill someone, that person in their kill cam will actually be able to watch the kill cam back and say whether it was deliberate or not. And uh, that's a great thing to have in Rainbow. Now, of course, this is really complicated because Rainbow Six Siege is so complicated itself. It gets real complicated in how this system works in order for it not to be used as an exploit. So we're going to go through all the details of that now. So first of all, in all game modes, Reverse Friendly Fire will be activated if you team kill and that player then says that you did that deliberately or if they don't answer the question at all or you do a certain amount of team damage and then it will be automatically switched on. Once it's been switched on for you, there'll be a message on your screen that will let you know that it's on and any damage you deal to Friendly will be reflected back However, there are exceptions. So once you or your teammate has triggered Reflect Friendly Fire, primary and secondary weapon damage from that player will be reflected back. Also, certain gadgets will be reflected back too. So Maverick's Blowtorch, Buck Shotgun, Ash's Breaching Round, although that's only from the impact, not the actual explosion from Ash's Breaching Round. Sophia's gadget, this is again, is impact and not actually explosions. We've also got Chanka's turret that will be reflected back no matter who's on it. Nomad's gadget will be reflected back. That's again, that's the impact from the gadget, not the actual knockback. So you can still get knocked back by this gadget. And Mozzie's little drone catchers, which he fires out. Again, that's from impact damage. So for Ash, Zofia, and Nomad and Mozzie, it's that 10 damage you would do from throwing something at a player. That should also count for something like hitting people with nitro cells, uh, Valkyrie cams, things like that as well. But all that stuff can change. Now the big exception to this rule is explosives. These will still kill teammates. They will not reflect back. And that of course means trolls can still use them, although it does limit them at least. So nitro cells, impacts, breaching charges, frag grenades can all team kill without reflecting damage back. Also, smoke's gas will not reflect back. Ash's breaching round from the explosive, not the impact, will not reflect back and will damage teammates. Capital's fire arrow will damage teammates as well and not reflect back. And the same with Fuse's cluster charge. Now this little section here, this is the complicated bit. So you can see there's asterisks, asterisks. You know, there's a lot of freaking asterisks. So explosive gadgets that do not damage will not impact reflect friendly fire. So the first one here, I actually don't know what the hell this means because it says explosive gadgets that do not damage will not impact reflect friendly fire. Uh, yeah, if they don't damage, that's the whole point of it. So if they're not doing any damage, they're not going to reflect back. So let's ignore that one for now. But you have the two asterisk ones. This is explosives currently will damage teammates while under reflect from the fire will be changed in year four season two. So that's very interesting. Now this is really the biggest actual uh, major interesting point because this means that in the future, Fuse's cluster charge will not kill teammates, which is huge because you could cluster charge a room, have your entire team rush in and they wouldn't die. You as Fuse would be the only person to die. So that means in the future, that's how it's going to work. So they'll have to have another system in place to stop that being used as an exploit. Now, I'm not sure how. Maybe if you are near an explosion that's friendly, maybe you get knocked down, kind of like a nomad charge. Maybe you get, you know, immobilized for a few seconds. You can't protect yourself so that, you know, the defenders have a fair chance to still kill you. Fuse gets blown up in the process and you have, as a defender, still have a chance to kill whoever is in that room. Uh, it's very interesting. I'm actually really interested in what they do for this. This is huge. Then we have the three asterisks here, which is these ones can damage teammates 
but it will not count to activating reverse friendly fire. The damage will also not reflect back on the user as well. So for instance, if you were to blow someone up with a cap count trap and you team killed, that player will not get the opportunity to say whether it was deliberate or not. And the damage you dealt is not going to add up to the reflect friendly damage actually being activated. The reason for this is it's very hard to kill a teammate with a claymore or a cap count trap or a thermite trap or Habana cluster charge. Like if you're trying to troll with these gadgets, then you're freaking brilliant at the game if you're managing the team kill with these deliberately. So that's a, you know, a good thing. So that's a really good way that this works. Then we've got the drones and cams. Now this is far more complicated than you might be thinking right away. Because if you were to say you use a Twitch drone, right? You go up and you shoot a friendly with it, or you go up and you shoot a friendly drone with it. If reflect friendly fire is on, Twitch doesn't get damaged. However, her drone does. So if you go up and shoot another drone, her drone will actually die. Uh, it's an interesting way to implement it. The same with Maestro's turret. If he actually starts to shoot at some friendly gadgets or a friendly teammate and reflect friendly damage is on, he will actually destroy his own gadget instead of the ones he's shooting at. Again, really interesting. The reason that Mozzie's actually here is because he can control Twitch's drones. That's why he's here. Otherwise, he can't do any damage unless he has a Twitch drone under his control. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bloody complicated system. It shows how complicated this is for the developers and for Siege because it's, it is a really complicated system because the game is so complex. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting. And, of course, this is the first iteration of this. They do say that in Season 2 they're going to be doing far more. This is... You know, this is just the first step. So they're going to be continuing to improve this. Like I say, explosives in the future with Season 2 are going to get changed. I wouldn't expect to see this with the launch of Season 2. This might be more of a mid-season in Season 2, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, of course, it could be buggy. There could be issues, and they're going to obviously want feedback. So if you have any feedback, you can certainly let them know on the Reddit and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it should be live now. If it's not live now, it'll be live very soon. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think of my explanation of how this actually works. Let me know if you're still confused by it or if I've actually got any of this information incorrect. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.